Ukraine's special operations forces say the attack on Russia's Black Sea Fleet headquarters left dozens dead and wounded, including senior leadership. We're also seeing new video today of black smoke billowing from the building in the aftermath of that strike. The special forces also claim the strike was timed to hit while senior members of Russia's Navy were meeting. The attack comes as Ukraine continues its counteroffensive against Russian forces. CNN's Fred Plaikin has more. Hi there, Frederica. Well, the Ukrainians certainly believe that they have a bit of momentum going for them. In fact, I was able to sit down with the commanding general of Ukraine's counteroffensive in the south, and he confirmed that they have managed a bit of a breakthrough near a town called Verbova. Now, of course, they do still have a long way to go, but he also said that that strike on the Russian headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet is very important to their progress. Here's what he said. Smoke billowing from Russia's Black Sea Fleet headquarters in Sevastopol. Moscow blaming Ukrainian-launched cruise missiles, Kiev only confirming they hit the building. I sat down with the commanding general for Ukraine's counteroffensive in the south, Oleksandr Tarnovsky, and he tells me strikes like these are invaluable for his troops. The destroyed commander means a destroyed command link, and if there is no command, then there are no coordinated actions hitting infrastructure like factories, bases, warehouses, containing weapons is also a factor for victory. In the past weeks alone, the Ukrainians say they've hit a Russian ship, a submarine, an air base, and a surface-to-air missile system in occupied Crimea. Still, Ukraine's president faces skepticism both from many Republican lawmakers and the public about the U.S.'s continued support for Ukraine. Tarnovsky asking for patience. We have one goal, liberation of our territories. However hard it is, we will keep on working. And I want to thank even the skeptics. Their criticism also influences our task's success. It's been a slow grind for the Ukrainians on the southern front. Progress so far incremental. But the question is, so do you think that there will be a point when all, there will be a big push? I believe so, and I think this point will be Tokmak. They are relying on the depth of the offensive line there. I worry less about the Surovikan line, more about the crossroads, tree lines and the minefields between the tree lines. But the U.S. has cautioned time might be running out as fall progresses, making the earth here soggy and movement difficult. How much do you think that you can achieve before the winter sets in? How far do you think your forces can get? Realistically. The weather can be a serious obstacle during an advance, but considering how we move forward, mostly without using vehicles, I don't think the weather will heavily influence the counteroffensive. General Tarnovsky says he remains optimistic that Ukraine's counteroffensive will be a success, especially if Ukraine continues its campaign targeting Russian forces in the rear, like Crimea. It's the commanding general of Ukraine's counteroffensive in the south. He also said that that strike on the headquarters of the Black Sea Fleet, very important to boost the morale of his forces that are fighting in the field. And he also said it's really important because he believes it really hurts the morale of the Russians, Frederica. All right, Fred Plaikin, thanks so much. All right, let's bring in U.S. Army Brigadier General, retired um, Brigadier General Mark uh, Kimmett. He is also the former Assistant Secretary of State for Political Military Affairs under President uh, George W. Bush. Great to see you, General. Sure, Fred. So in your view, does it appear uh, that the uh, Russian defenses were caught off guard by that attack and that this is pretty defeating? Well, they certainly were uh, caught off guard. So, I mean, the fact that you could allow a headquarters of that magnitude get hit without any air defense or uh, defenses around it uh, indicates an incredible lapse in their, their operational security. Will it make a difference? Uh, I think, as the general said and as Fred said, it will be a morale boost to the Ukrainians. It may hurt the morale of the Russians, but I don't think it's going to be very consequential in isolation. Uh, but there is a very interesting uh, factor, and there's very interesting shift on the battlefield that I think this is part of. And even if senior leadership um, may have been killed or compromised during that strike? Uh, it, good militaries always have people that can step in for leaders. That's the nature of war. Leaders get killed. Somebody's got to be ready to step up. Mm. All right. Ukrainian uh, President uh, Zelensky was on Capitol Hill this week. He was trying to shore up uh, U.S. support uh, in Congress. 
Is it your expectation that the U.S. support in terms of aid, money, arsenal uh, to Ukraine will soften as we head into an election year? And if so, um, will that ultimately lead to a loss? As uh, President Zelensky said, he said, you know, they will lose the war if there is diminished U.S. support. Well, I don't think that we're going to see diminished support. I just think this administration needs to make a harder case. And so does President Zelensky, and I think he is doing that now. Uh, the subtle shift that I'm seeing uh, is very interesting. We're seeing less and less focus on the ground counteroffensive in Ukraine and more and more activity against the naval forces on the sea and, as we saw, this hit uh, against the naval uh, headquarters on, on the land. So it could very well be that the shift on the battlefield from focusing in Ukraine to focusing on Crimea, number one, will certainly uh, lift the morale of the Ukrainian forces, but I think it will also demonstrate uh, to the Western allies that there is being progress uh, on the ground. There is progress being made on the ground, not necessarily uh, in the north, but certainly what's happening down in Crimea on the ground there and on the sea. Uh, the new U.S. aid package to Ukraine would include controversial cluster bombs. Uh, will that make a huge difference? Not really. We've had cluster bombs being used by both sides uh, for quite some time, for about mm -hmm. six months now. What will make a difference is also this announcement that we will start using the long-range attack of missiles. That will have a consequence on the battlefield. All right, let me shift gears now uh, to the Middle East. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu this week saying Israel is close to a normalization agreement with Saudi Arabia. This is what he told CNN. Do you feel that a deal is likely? I think it's, I think it's possible. I think it's likely because I think uh, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the United States share a common goal to change history, to make this quantum leap another quantum leap for peace. We had one with the Abraham Accords, with the United States, and we now have an opportunity with the United States to change the Middle East forever. So, General, would this kind of agreement dramatically shift the state of play in the Middle East? Well, look, I think the Netanyahu talk was very important, but even more important was the talk with Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince inside of Saudi Arabia. He made a larger shift in policy, to my mind, than any other Saudi leader has uh, in 50 years. The fact that Saudi Arabia is now willing to normalize with uh, Israel. Israel has always wanted to normalize under the right conditions with uh, Saudi Arabia. But this, this flexibility being shown by Mohammed bin Salman for the purposes of normalizing with Israel is tremendously significant. And in fact, it could lead exactly to what President Netanyahu said, which is, is good relations between those two countries uh, in a way that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. All right. General Mark Kimmett, thank you so much. Good to see you.